I've removed the choke and put the drive plate on and temporarily mounted a piece of, piece of stock between centers uh, and I've, straight away I've come across a problem this is not going to be good without that revolving in your hand in there is not a good idea uh, what I should have done I should have set the compound slide the other way so it's coming in from this side not a problem it just means I'll have to sew it all up again uh, so this will be round this way I've got no idea what made us do what made us do it that way but I did it that way uh, so what I'll do I'll start again I'll turn it round and I'll set it up uh, cutting from this direction I'll not video that because you've already seen it seen it being done once right I've got it set up again you can see it's a lot better this way because my hand is across here on the safe side that's not good with a hand rattling about there so I've got it set up same as I had it before just as accurate Slightly different setup here, but basically, basically the same. Still using the same most tape out between centers. Right, I've got a bit of ball motor between centers. Uh, who I made driving dog there? Do with a shorter, shorter sense, shorter center in there. But this is going to do for what for what I need. You can see now why I didn't want the handle of the compound slide up there. You don't want to be. You want to keep away from that lot. Work up this end where you're going to be safe. You've got to be aware of that thing spinning round. You don't want to be getting caught in there. That's why I don't wear jewellery, I don't wear watches. I've got uh, tight sleeves, no cuffs, nothing rattling about, nothing's going to get stuck in there. I'm staring away. You can appreciate that, you know, that, that's a revolving sharp thing, just waiting to snag you. If you imagine that, instead of being a bit of revolving metal, think of it as a, like, like a crocodile's mouth wide open, waiting to bite your bloody hand off. Right, that's enough of the crocodile end, we'll play on the nice end. Quite a bit of metal to come off this so what I've done, I've changed the cutter, I've put a different type of tool in, I've put the lathe back here, I'm going to take a couple of heavy cuts off it, just a couple of roughened cuts, um, probably take 75 thou side. I'll put cooling water on as well, and you'll see how it goes. Taking my rough and cut off, we'll take my rough and tool out. Put my finishing tool in, it's got a nice new tip on it. Just the feet down a bit. You can't run the lathe too fast uh, because it'll be out of balance with a driving dog on. What you could do is put a counterbalance weight on there, but for what I'm doing, I think it'll be, I think it'll be all right. So I'm going to touch that off. Zero the compound slide. Sorry, zero the cross slide. Put on and see they have changed me. The revolving centre, that's my best one, one I use for, for real fine work. Right, we'll start it up and put a 
put a lead cut on. I think the length of the tape has to turn three quarters of an inch, so you can see we've got, we've got a fair bit to grow. What I'll do once I get near the size, I'll put a new, I'll put a new tip in. It's certainly putting, putting the tape around, I'm not getting a very good finish. Um, it's difficult feeding it in by hand with a compound slate because it's the handle is very near the tail stock, there's not much I can do about it. I've still got another 20 to take 10 to a side. I think what I might try and do is grind up a high speed stool, high speed stool, a high speed steel tool bit. And instead of using a tip tool, you often get a better finish with high speed steel. I've put a high speed steel tool in instead of the tip tool so I can get a better finish and straight away you can say I am getting a better finish if you watch Adam, Booth and Tom in Ox Tools videos you'll see they doing like a competition with high speed steel seeing how deep a cut they can get well, I'm not really interested in taking deep cuts on this lathe because it's a small lightweight lathe. But I am interested in getting a good surface finish, and that's putting a really good surface finish on. The tool I've had for quite some time, and all I've done, I've given a quick rub up with a with a screw. You can see this; it is putting a nice finish on. So the only thing you've got to use, you've got to use carbide, you've got to use insert tools you haven't. The money for years were high speed steel. The money for years were tool steel before that. That's a much, much better finish. One thing with tape is once you get near the size, you find that if you take, you take very, very little off and it makes the tape go a long way into the socket. The size we're looking for is 0.6 of an inch, 6 hundredths. We're very nearly there. A couple of thou over the top. I think what I'll do, I'll take one more, one more cut on the same setting, like a spring cut. And then try it into a... Try it into a socket. It's not taking much off, but it is taking metal off. But you see, once you start to get near the size. On the taper, it takes very little to be put to go too far in. The trouble is the, the pump will say in the layers wall, it's, it's getting tight as I get up with this part of it. That's quite a nice finish. It's one thing about machinery between centers, I can put that back in and it'll be exactly where it was before.
that feels good. That's gripping straight away. It ejects it as well. What I'll do, I'll put some, I'll put some marking blow on. Put it in, give it a turn, and see what. But it does feel good. I will put a little bit of this stuff, what they call my chromatab blow. It doesn't take much, really, a little bit like that will go a long way. All we'll do, we'll put a one line down there like that, put it in and turn it. That goes into there, turn it one straight round. And that is not a bad, not a bad result. You can see it's right. I've got a, I've got a most taper sleeve here, uh, which is better internally than my tail suck on the layer because that has had one or two layers spinning over the years. Now I've washed these off with brake cleaner, so I'll put a little bit of blue on my taper again. It's an even little smear like that. We'll put it in, one turn, you can feel it gripping, if you look at it, it's actually, once a little bit off the centre, let's wipe the blow off, so I'll put it back between centres and give it a bit to the vehicle's memory to you. Take the tool off. The less things you've got, the don't to cut your hands on and jam your hands on, the better. So that's the area there. When the blue's wiped off, that we want to concentrate on with the emery tape. Just get there. It doesn't see. It doesn't take much. Right, we'll try it again. Right, I've got it now, so it's actually it's actually rubbing all the way around. It's pulling the blow all the way off, so that's touching all the way down the taper. It's, it's getting a hold straight away. It's it's locked in there. I can't get it off. Use a couple of tapers to break it. So what I'll do now, I'll put it back in, I'll polish it with a bit of scotch brite, and then we'll deem that taper is finished. These are the, the scotch brite pads, one of my viewer centers are ideal for finishing off. Get a real fine finish. It almost looks like it's like it's been ground up. Right, I think we're well, usually be happy with that. See what I mean about the about the blue it gets everywhere. That's, that's excellent, that's got a good hold and it ejects out as well. You often see on the end of a more taper, like on a drill, they've got two flats like that. The flats aren't to drive the drill, it's the actual most taper that drives the drill, drives the drill, the friction between the two tapers. But that's 
that's excellent. I think what I'll do now, I've got the got the machine set up like this. I'll machine two or three more tapers. Probably want stainless steel or better material than this, just for blanks, just to have for making various adapters. Yep, John's pleased with that.